With today's software capabilities, you can even integrate your email tools with your Facebook custom audiences account. Now, this lets you keep your Facebook audiences up to date with actions that your contacts are taking elsewhere. Melissa has her active campaign account integrated with her Facebook custom audiences. So let's hear how that helps her manage her expectations and create more relevant experiences. Mm. It took us about a year to really nail the, the ads and she did all the research and she set up my active campaign um, and took a, took a look at the mess I'd made on my own, put some structure in place and she did all the full integration. She's like, right, let's get your deep data integrations going. Let's get some custom audiences going. Um, and she was the one who helped me kick that into shape, really. So that was when we started building Facebook custom audiences based on the behavior of, of our existing clients and what they did and pushing that through to and and then I remember the first time I went into ads manager and there it was sitting there waiting to be used I was like this is magic <laughs> what because I knew you could do that I've been like exporting spreadsheets of names of people from WooCommerce who bought a certain product and uploading it into Facebook but the fact that I can have I mean the magic thing is right you do that once and it's not dynamic the magic of the custom audiences in active campaigns they're dynamically updating themselves. People pull themselves out. They put themselves in based on their behavior. Right. So my Facebook audience never has, I never have to touch them. They're looking after themselves. I'm not, I don't have to re-upload spreadsheets. They're just, the better my list is, the more accurate it is, the cleaner it is, the more responsive, the better my Facebook audiences are. So I find it a real motivator. I'm like, hey, let's have a call. <laughs> we need to get rid of some of these people who are just sitting around not buying anything because they're distorting my Facebook audience. Right. How many different audiences do you do you have on Facebook? Right. So if the same as we did when we first first bought them. Um, so we have anyone who's a subscriber. So we, that's quite a broad net to have, but it's always worth it if you're just. I don't know how much I use it anymore. It used to when my list was smaller, it made sense to have an all subs list, but now that it's um, a lot bigger, it's around 18, 20k at any given time. Like chunk, I take chunks out of it all the time. People are not responsive. Um, I've then I have um, so basically the three people who've signed up to be in our world so mm -hmm. also subscribers then we have then people who do buy um, and depending on what they buy so I've got two sides of the business as I said the, the membership and the templates so I've got template owners members um, people who don't buy <laughs> so I always have people who have I've got one of they've signed up but they haven't bought so I've got two two of those because they're, okay. they're they're good at knowing about those. And I have people who stop buying. So people who kind of like lapse from the membership, they go into a, um, a win back audience. And after a certain time, they'll start seeing ads again. And I give them kind of, I think, three month break. And then they, that starts um, delivering again. Okay. So yeah, so it's, and also a really neat little one is um, we also segment people based on engagement. So people who join my Facebook group, there's a neat little bit of kit called group funnels, which with a bit of Zapier kind of jiggery in the middle, you can then send those people into active campaign and um, Facebook people who have signed up for something, then join my free group. They're like double hand raisers. So I want to know about those people. They're like super engaged, super right. interested. So they get a special custom audience of their own as well. And I always, I always build one for any current promotion. So I'm selling a workshop that's happening next week right now. So that's, I'm going to use that next week when we get into retargeting mode. Okay, awesome. And, and so, are, in within Active Campaign, are these all different tags that sort of trigger the um, addition or you know removal from these different custom audiences, or how does that look? Uh, so it's a variety of things. So a purchase, which will give them a tag, but also um, the deep data will you know any purchases just go straight into an audience. So that that couple, and I think we use the tag as a fail safe. I think we have two triggers for that. Okay. Um, then there would be people who. Yeah, people who join the Facebook group get tagged and then the win back people will, yes, that's tag, they get a tag will cancelled, they go back, so that's good as that. And current promotions is, I've got people bought the, yeah, I'm just, I need to build that audience out. I mean, once I get to the, I've done the workshop and I want to reopen the cart and people are kind of being sales, I'll probably, I'll have several audiences that I can include and exclude. Okay. And I, I know in my audience as well, like they, they, as soon as they lose a tag or they gain a tag, I only have a goal to pull them out of that audience so they, I'm not wasting money on showing ads to people who've already bought. Or... Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's one of the, 
the, the biggest <laughs> nightmares, right? Is to just continually show ads to people who just don't want to see them. Um, awesome. That's, that's great to hear. That's always sort of the question too, right? Like what is the critical mass or what is the sweet spot to where you really start to see those results? Yeah. That's great. And when you, when you, the other thing that comes into play is, which I really recommend doing is I've got this blog post. It's like how to add an Instagram feed to your website. It's like number one ranked, even everywhere, even above Instagram themselves. It's number one on the first page of Google. It's not a crazy long post. It brings me about 15 to 20,000 unique visitors a month, that one post. Mm. It's like my special golden child that I'm always checking on it. And there's a, there's a specific content upgrade that gets people onto that list to do with that subject. And then once they're on that subject, and I've got another one for Woo, WooCommerce, which is kind of an, um, a WordPress shopping cart plugin. So the WooCommerce one is great because what happens is they, they read it, they sign up for my free WooCommerce mini course, then that sets off a retargeting ad, which um, shows them um, my WooCommerce themes. Mm. And the next thing I know, I just see them dropping into the cart and I'm like, great. So you can be hyper-targeted with, with the way you, you put all of that together. So, so that's why I, I would advise people who are struggling to get traction to really spend a bit of time building two or three cornerstone posts, which are going to work really hard for you. Okay. Because, yeah, they're, they're like low-hanging fruit because if they're, they've demonstrated they're interested in your subject, they sign up for the free thing you've got, then they see that the, the next, the paid thing, which is going to help them get there quicker. Um, right. You know, great. And yeah. yeah, so for, actually, I've got to say, so for those two specific blog post content upgrades, I do have custom audiences for those because I want them to see specific products. Mm, okay, that's that's awesome. Using that that SEO organic visitors to just convert that. I mean, that's the dream, right? That's what everybody wants to do. Yeah. That's That's awesome. Melissa touched on a few strategies there. Thinking about particular actions that a contact can take, or if you have other sources of lead generation, these things can be great ways to segment your audience by, and then you can target those segments with a different ad. Melissa mentioned contacts who come through a particular blog post. Now, these contacts have an interest in a specific topic, right? And, and she retargets them with a hyper-relevant ad. This strategy lets you take a more tactical approach. Or, for example, if they've purchased, don't target them at all. There's, there's nothing worse than throwing money away at contacts who have already purchased from you and are unlikely to purchase again. And with automation and integration through tools like ActiveCampaign, those contacts would get pulled out of your audience so that doesn't happen and you don't have to worry or lose sleep over it. Hi, thank you for watching. If you are enjoying Growth Decoded, you can find a link in the description to sign up and join the Grow team. You'll get exclusive content and opportunities that have to do with the show. You can also hit the subscribe button for ActiveCampaign's YouTube channel somewhere down here and you will never miss an update from us.